All right. Well, spill the beans, man. What happened last week? Why do you uh, stop people? Why can people buy the GameStop shares? The people demand an answer, and they want to know the details and the truth. Did hedge funds, clearing firms, and brokers collude against retail to halt buying in GameStop? Were these actions legitimate and aimed at protecting retail and maintaining the stability of the financial system? This video will answer these questions. The video will break down an interview between Elon Musk and Robin Hood CEO Vlad Tenev. The interview took place on Clubhouse which is a new social media network based on audio where users can talk, listen, and learn from people in real time. The beginning of this conversation starts with Mars colonization, extraterrestrial life, Neuralink, crypto, and AI, the usually long topics. Vlad Tenev, CEO of Robin Hood, joins the Clubhouse around the 1 hour and 20 minute mark. Let me start by giving a little bit of background. Um, so I'm the chief executive of Robin Hood. Robin yeah, is actually a... <laughs> Just I'll, on, I'll go through this quickly. Please. Don't worry. This is, this is, uh, this is important. Um, it's actually uh, a couple of companies. So there's a, an introducing broker dealer uh, called Robin Hood Financial. And that basically is the app that you uh, know and love. It processes trades. Uh, you're a customer of, of Robinhood Financial. Then there's a clearing broker dealer, um, Robinhood Securities, that clears and settles the trades. And then we have Robinhood Crypto, um, which is our crypto business. Um, all of which, uh, all of these are kind of different entities that are differently operated. So basically, Wednesday of last week, uh, we just had, you know, unprecedented volume unprecedented load on the system. Uh, a lot of these, you know, so-called meme stocks were, um, you know, going viral on social media and people were, um, people were joining Robinhood and there was a lot of net buy activity on them, um, as you guys all know. And Robinhood at this time, I think was number one on the iOS app store. Um, and uh, pretty close, if not number one, on, on Google Play as well. So just unprecedented yeah. activity. Um, Vlad goes on to explain that Robinhood is several different companies. Robinhood Financial is the introducing broker-dealer that runs the trading platform. Robinhood Securities is an entity that clears and settles trades that are made on the platform. The third segment of the company is Robinhood Crypto, which deals with crypto trading. He mentions that these three companies operate separately. And so Thursday morning, right? Um, so I'm I'm sleeping, uh, but at 3:30 a.m. Pacific, um, our operations team receives a file from the NSCC, which is the National Securities Clearing Corporation. So basically, as a broker, as a clearing broker, um, and this is where Robinhood Securities comes in, we have to put up money to the NSCC. Um, based on some factors, including um, things like the volatility of the uh, of the trading activity, concentration into certain securities, um, and this is this is the equities business. So it's based on stock trading and um, uh, not options trading or or anything else. Um, so they gave us a file with a deposit, and the the request was around three billion dollars um which is you know about an order of magnitude more than what it typically is right vlad describes nscc which is a subsidiary of dtcc the depository trust and clearing corporation dtcc is responsible for clearing 95 percent of all stock trades it guarantees that stocks are transferred to buyers and cash is transferred to sellers since this process takes two days t plus two DTCC requires stockbrokers to post collateral. Due to the counterparty risk, DTCC requires this collateral to back trading activity and would use these funds to cover losses in the event there is a counterparty failure. In times of heightened volatility, DTCC requires more collateral from brokers such as Robinhood but usually these margin requirements have a grace period to go into effect. Therefore, it is odd they decided to raise collateral at 3 a.m., even considering massive activity in meme stocks. So, um, no, no, why, why and, was that so high? Like, this seems like, like, it, it sounds like this is an unprecedented increase in uh, demand for capital. Um, what formula did they use to calculate that? Well, um, 
yeah, and just to give context, you know, Robin Hood up until that point has raised, uh, you know, a little bit around $2 billion in total uh, venture capital up until now. So it's a big number, like $3 billion is, um, is a large number, right? So um, basically the, and, you know, I, the details are, we don't have the full details. It's a little bit of an opaque formula, but there's a component called the VAR of it, which is value at risk. And um, that's based on kind of some fairly quantitative things, although it's not, it's not fully transparent. So uh, there are ways to reverse engineer it, but uh, it's not kind of publicly shared. Um, and then there's a special component which is discretionary. Um, so that's that kind of acts as a multiplier. And um, basically- it's Discretionary discretionary meaning like it's just their opinion. Yeah, uh, it's it's a little bit, I mean, I'm sure there's there's definitely more more than just their opinion, but um, basically- Well, I mean, I, I guess like- It's based everyone, on growth. What everyone wants to know, what everyone wants to know is like, did something maybe shady go down here? Like, like it, it's like, it seems weird that you'd get a sudden $10 billion demand you know, three billion, three, three billion. in the morning. Sorry, how much? Yeah, it was three billion U.S. dollars. Three billion. Okay, three, three billion yeah, around. You know, just suddenly out of nowhere. Um, and what I wouldn't, I wouldn't impute, I wouldn't impute shadiness to it or anything like okay. that. And actually, you know, the NSCC was reasonable subsequent to this, and you know, they've been. They've been uh, they worked with us to um, to actually lower it. So um, it was unprecedented activity. You know, we don't I don't have the full context about, um, you know, what was what was going on in what's going on in the in the NSCC to make these calculations. But, um, yeah, essentially, is anyone, it was is a large anyone holding you hostage right now? Uh, <laughs> no, no, Blake I'm OK. Twice. <laughs> yeah um thanks for asking but anyway so this was uh this was obviously nerve-wracking and i actually was asleep at this point you know the operations team was uh was fielding this at at three o'clock and then um you know we got back we put our heads together um you know our chief operating officer basically said look let's call up the higher ups at the nscc and kind of figure out what's going on maybe there's some way we can work with them and um basically there was another call and they lowered it to something like 1.4 billion dollars uh, from three okay. so okay we were making some progress right and then <laughs> but it's still a high number and then um we basically proposed, well, let's let's explain how we plan to um, let's explain how you know we'll manage risk in these symbols throughout the day. Uh, we proposed um, marking these volatile stocks that were kind of driving driving the activity, position closing only, and then um, at about uh, an hour before market close market open. So 530 or five in the morning, they came back and they said, okay, uh, the charge is, or the deposit 700 million, which we then deposited and paid promptly. And then, um, everything was fine. Um, so that, that okay. essentially explains why we had to, um, we had to mark these symbols position closing only. And also why, you know, we didn't want to. We knew this was a bad outcome for customers. Um, you know, part of what's been really difficult is um, Robinhood stands for, you know, democratizing access to stocks, and yeah. we want we want to give people the access. So that's been very very challenging. Um, but we had no choice in this case. We had to conform to our regulatory capital requirements, and so the team did uh, did what they could to make sure we were available for customers. Who controls this, this, this organization, this clearinghouse? Um, you know, it's a it's a consortium. It's not it's not quite a government agency. Um, you know, I I don't really know the details of of uh, of all of that. Okay. But you know, and to be fair, like we were we were. Uh, I, I think there was legitimate 
sort of turmoil in the markets. Like these are unprecedented events with these meme stocks. And, you know, there was a lot of activity. So there probably is um, so some amount of extra risk in the system that warrants higher, higher requirements. So it's not entirely unreasonable. Um, but we did operational processes to make sure that customers that had positions could sell their open positions because obviously restricting someone we got a lot of questions about okay you had to restrict buying why didn't you also restrict selling and the fact uh -huh. of the matter is yeah. people get really pissed off if they're holding stock and they want to sell it and they can't right so i think that's that's categorically worse so um and lots of other brokers I think we're in the same situation. Robinhood was in the news, but you you sort of heard this industry wide, right? Other brokers uh, basically restricted the same exact activity. All right, so so it sounds like this this, this organization you know calls you up and they basically have a gun to your head, either either hand over this money or or else. Um, and so because I mean, like basically, what people are wondering is like, did did you sell your clients down the river or do you have no choice? If you had no choice, that's understandable. But then, you know, we got to find out why you had no choice. And who are these people that are saying you have no choice? Yeah, um, I think that's fair. You know, we have to comply with these requirements. Financial institutions have requirements. Um, you know, the, the, the formula behind these requirements, um, I think, um, it would obviously be ideal if there was a little bit more transparency so we could plan better around that, um, you know, but to be fair, we were able to open and serve our customers and, um, you know, 24, 24 hours later, um, our team raised over a billion dollars in capital so that when we, when we did open, uh, well, when we do open tomorrow morning, uh, we'll be able to kind of relax the stringent position limits that we put on these securities on Friday. Will there be any limits? Well, I think there's always going to be some theoretical limit. Like we don't have infinite capital, right? Okay. And on Friday there were limits. Um, so there's always there's always going to have to be some limit. I think the question is, you know, will the limits be high enough to the point where, you know, some they they won't impact, you know, 99.9 .9 plus percent of customers. Um, so. You know, if someone were to deposit a hundred billion dollars and and decide to trade in one stock like that, that wouldn't be possible. You know. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess people really just want to know. You know, if you had no choice, then then you had no choice. Uh, it's gun to the head situation, um, and you know, then that's understandable. Uh, but then whoever put that gun to your head should, you know, be willing to answer to the public. Yeah, listen, and, uh, you know, I know there's there's processes. This is unprecedented times. And to be fair to those guys, those guys. They've, been, they've been reasonable. So um, in this next clip, Vlad describes why the ATCC required three billion dollars in collateral. The collateral amount is discretionary and loosely based on value at risk or VAR, which is an industry standard. Robinhood negotiated this amount down to $700 million. Furthermore, Vlad stated why the company decided to list the stock as liquidation only to further reduce risk. He also mentioned that Robinhood had no choice but to comply with DTCC orders and that several other brokers did the same thing. These remarks were also made by Webull CEO Anthony Denier on an interview last week with Benzinga. The link to that interview is in the description of this video. We are, I think the, the one thing that is maybe not clear to people is Robin is a participant in the financial system. Um, so we have to work with all of these counterparties. So we do get a lot of questions about, you know, why do you work with market makers? Why do you work with clearing houses? Uh, vertically integrating and getting, um, I mean, it's hard enough to, to build a introducing and a clearing broker dealer. Not too many people have done that. But the financial system that, uh, allows customers to trade shares um, is sort of a complex web of multiple parties. And, um, you know, it's it's hard to, 
I think everyone says oh, it could be better, it could be improved. Um, it's it's just the necessity of of trading equities in the U.S. that you have to do all these things. Next, Vlad describes that the plumbing of the financial system is very complex. There is a web of investors, brokers, clearing firms, and market makers that are all subject to various risks arising from the settlement of trades. I mean, to what degree are you beholden to Citadel? I mean, like, like basically, if Citadel is unhappy, then I, I, what then what happens? Yeah, so that you know, there was a rumor that uh, Citadel uh, or other market makers kind of pressured us into doing this, and now that, that's just false, right? Um, market makers execute our trades; they execute trades of of every broker dealer. Um, you know, this was this was a clearinghouse. Um, this was a clearinghouse decision, and it was just based on the capital requirements. So, um, okay. from our perspective, you know, Citadel and other market makers um, weren't involved in that. But wouldn't they have a strong say in, in who got put in charge of that organization since it's an industry consortium, not a government consortium or not a government regulatory agency? Um, I, I don't have any reason to believe that. I think that's just like, you know, then you're getting into kind of the conspiracy theories a little bit. So I just have no no reason to believe that that's the case, you know. OK. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I um, guess uh, so we'll see what happens with future actions. Um, hopefully that wow. was, uh, Insightful or you know, at least a little bit entertaining. Are you not entertaining? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, okay. In the final part of the interview, Elon prods Vlad to describe how beholden to Citadel Robin Hood truly is. Vlad describes that this had nothing to do with Citadel and was a problem with the clearing firm DTCC. Citadel is a large hedge fund that primarily makes markets in stocks. Citadel executes trades for Robin Hood and is their largest customer. Citadel pays Robinhood for order flow, which allows it to front run Robinhood customers when they are placing trades. Therefore, Citadel is unlikely to have played a role in colluding with Robinhood since it sees retail flows and its own market making risk in advance. Despite this arrangement, it looks suspicious that Citadel and Point72 provided a $2.75 billion cash infusion to Melvin Capital to keep it afloat while it was liquidating its GME short position. Although this seems suspicious, Melvin Capital exited its short position on Tuesday, January 26th, according to CNBC. Melvin Capital exited its position two days before Robinhood and other brokers halted buying in GameStop and other meme stocks. The whole situation is still suspicious since collateral requirements usually take days, if not weeks, to go into effect. For instance, margin and collateral requirements were gradually increased during the height of the crisis last March during a period of historic volatility. Robinhood simply should have raised margins for its users instead of banning new positions outright. To summarize, Robinhood had to suspend buying in meme stocks due to an increased collateral requirement from its clearing firm, DTCC. DTCC is responsible for settling trades and transferring stock and cash to both parties of a trade. Citadel pays for order flow and can manage its risk in real time by choosing how to provide liquidity. For this reason, it does not really need to collude with Robinhood since it effectively does this in advance. Finally, Melvin Capital liquidated its short position in GME two days before Robinhood suspended buying in it and other stocks. Thus, it did not cover its position when GME collapsed during the buying halt as many upset traders believed. This is still a developing story and details are still coming out. Due to public outrage, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle, in addition to regulators, are likely to open investigations about what truly happened and whether or not there was criminal activity involved. For now, it seems that the GME short squeeze is over. After trading above $500 last week, GameStop closed at $92.41 on Wednesday, February 3rd. As of Tuesday, trading activity is still limited in these meme stocks. Thanks for watching the video and we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you would like more content like this each week, Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest releases. Also make sure to post a comment down below to suggest a topic for the next video. Bye!